Right, so now you must be having enough of understanding of SN1 and SN2. Now let's quickly summarize these things and before we move on to the next topic of elimination. Now SN1 and SN2 you must be having a very good feel of looking at the situation whether SN1 will follow or SN2 will follow. Let's talk a little bit before we move on to the next topic. If we have a 1 degree alkyl halide then SN1 is not possible here. SN, uh, sorry, SN, SN1 is not possible here because uh, the carbocation formed will be 0 degree. There will be no effects operating to stabilize that 0 degree carbocation. There will be no resonance, no aromaticity, no hyperconjugation, no inductive effect, no hydrogen bonding, nothing. So this will be too unstable to be formed even at elevated temperature. So SN1 is not possible no matter how polar is the solvent no matter how high is the nucleophilicity, no matter how good the living group is, SN1 will not follow in any kind of reaction of methyl halide. So this must be very clear to us by now that here SN2 is not, SN1 is not possible. Similarly, if we have a 3 degree alkyl halide, Then in 3 degree alkyl halide, the steric hindrance is so high that a nucleophile cannot reach into very near in the vicinity of the antibonding. So SN2 reaction will not be initiated in case of a 3 degree alkyl halide. So no matter how good the living group is, actually the nucleophile will not be able to, to put its electron into the antibonding. So the initialization of S SN2 will not take place, hence the whole reaction of via SN2 will not take place. So if we have a 3 degree alkyl halide, SN2 is not possible. If we have a 1 degree alkyl halide, SN1 is not possible. Or in S 1 degree or 0 degree for that matter, alkyl halide will have only SN1. Even if we have a 1 degree alkyl halide instead of 0 degree, even then the 1 degree carbocation is very unstable at normal room temperature. 1 degree carbocation is not formed. When, when we heat it, then 1 degree, uh, when we increase the energy of the system by heating, then 1 degree carbocation start forming. But at room temperature, generally we don't have 1 degree carbocation. So in case of 0 degree and 1 degree carbocation, we'll have only SN2. In case of 3 degree carbocation, we'll have only SN1. Now when it comes to 2 degree, then there the problem arises. It's only at 2 degree alkyl halide where you will have to think about whether it will be SN1 or it would be SN2 because 2 degree carbocation is sufficiently stable to be formed so this is potent enough to go our in a reaction via SN1 and the steric hindrance is also not too high so that SN2 will not take place so in 2 degree alkyl halide we will we'll have both SN1 and SN2 so this is the kind of substrate where you will have to apply your brain to ponder upon and think actually giving uh, given you will be given other other reagents or solutions depending upon the information provided will be able to judge whether in the given circumstances will have SN1 or SN2 for instance if you have a very polar solvent like H2O or any alcohol for that matter then SN1 would be encouraged if we have a less polar solvent or polar aprotic solvent like DMF or DMSO, DMF is for dimethyl formamide, DMSO is for dimethyl sulfoxide, we will see what they are. But uh, if we have a less polar solvent like DMF or DMSO, then SN2 will be encouraged. Now why would that be so? will discuss in a while but given upon the other other factors given and given the other informations that has been provided we will be able to judge that in a 2 degree alkyl halide the reaction will proceed through SN1 or SN2 now if we don't consider the stereochemistry then it hardly matters how uh, what is the reaction mechanism of the reaction what is the mechanism of the reaction is it SN1 or SN2 because the final product would be the same if there is no rearrangement in SN1 if we don't have a rearrangement then 
even a new if if we have a nucleophile even if it takes place through sn1 we'll have a carbocation formed here and the nucleophile added that will get attached to the carbon giving us ch3 ch2 nu whatever that nucleophile is and even if that reaction takes place via sn2 we'll have the same product so if we are only concerned with the product then it doesn't matter whether the reaction takes place through sn1 or sn2 if there is no rearrangement in sn1 suppose it's a bigger bigger substrate and carbocation is formed here and after forming it's get rearranged to some other position then the nucleophile will get attached to the new position of carbocation though in that case the product would be different for sn1 and sn2 but if there is no rearrangement in sn1 then the product would be same except for stereochemistry so the reason why we consider this sn1 and sn2 because stereochemistry is stereochemically the product of sn1 and sn2 will be different now so far we haven't discussed the stereochemistry aspect of sn1 and sn2 and i'm i'm leaving it for a further later on later discussion i'm not bringing that in to blog you into the detail of stereochemistry but keeping it simple by and large we understand sn1 and sn2 now and after studying few more reactions we'll study the stereochemistry aspect of all the reactions clumped together at one place so now we don't shouldn't worry ourselves over stereochemistry aspect but there is some difference there is some difference in the product of sn1 and sn2 stereochemically so here we'll learn us learn how to identify given a situation whether the reaction will proceed via sn1 or sn2 now this is this has to be learned here once we learn it here later on where we can again come back and discuss why did it learn and what is the difference and how stereochemically the products are different but now we must learn to identify that given a solvent given a substrate given a nucleophile given the concentration of nucleophile given the temperature how would we identify whether the reaction will go via sn1 or sn2 now to learn this let's identify let's know about polar protic and polar aprotic solvent now solvent by and large would be polar solvent and non polar solvent polar and non polar now the polar solvent will be one which has poles of charge that means we'll have a del plus on one side del minus on one side for example very common solvent water you have a del minus on oxygen you have a del plus on hydrogen because of electronegativity difference of oxygen and hydrogen so water is a polar solvent if we consider a non polar solvent like kerosene kerosene is made up of hydrocarbon octane heptane hexane non polar kerosene hydrocarbon carbon hydrogen almost same electronegativity no shifting of electron no development of polar polarity of charge it's a non polar solvent now polar solvent will be further subdivided into two categories that we have to study now one will be polar protic and the other will be polar aprotic protic a protic now protic is coming from proton proton means h plus this h plus hydrogen do not have any neutron in the nucleus it has one proton and one electron outside when we remove off the electron a charge is developed h plus and it is only left with one of the proton in the nucleus so h plus effectively is a proton h plus for h plus we use proton protic this protic is referring to h plus now we don't have a complete h plus like we'll have a plus charge a del plus charge on hydrogen so the solvent which will be having a del plus charge on hydrogen that kind of solvent will be polar protic solvent like water water is a polar protic solvent like any alcohol roh now since hydrogen is attached to oxygen so there is a electronegativity difference huge electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen owing to that hydrogen will develop a plus charge slight positive charge on itself so there will be a del plus so if a hydrogen has a positive charge if hydrogen has a del plus charge in a solvent that solvent will be called as polar protic solvent suppose we have acetone now acetone is a polar solvent because in this bond carbon and oxygen there's a huge electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen so carbon will have a del plus charge oxygen will have a del minus charge so this is a polar because there are sites having poles of charges so if you have a slight charges on different atoms that will be a polar solvent because it is having pole of charge 
so it's a polar solvent but if you look at this bond this bond is between carbon and carbon so they are the carbon carbon have same electronegativity value although the hybridization state is different but we'll consider there is almost same is not, not much of the polarity in this bond and the hydrogen is attached to carbon and the electronegativity value of hydrogen and carbon are almost same so the there will be no charge developed on the hydrogen so hydrogen is not having any charge so we don't have a H del plus in this solvent so this is not a protic solvent but it is polar so this is polar aprotic solvent so acetone is polar aprotic solvent similarly we have another important common polar aprotic solvent DMSO dimethyl sulfoxide this is dimethyl sulfoxide again if you see hydrogen is not attached to a electronegative atom it is attached to carbon here there is not much of electronegativity difference between hydrogen and carbon so hydrogen will not have a del plus charge so this is polar aprotic solvent another common polar aprotic solvent would be DMF dimethyl formamide now this group in organic chemistry is called amide when you have a hydrogen here this is formamide and when you have two methyl instead of hydrogen this is dimethyl formamide so dimethyl formamide would be formamide in which there are two methyl on nitrogen so this is dimethyl formamide again you can see this hydrogen is with carbon and these hydrogens are with carbon again so hydrogen is not attached to electronegative atom so hydrogen will not have any charge so this will not be a protic solvent rather it would be polar aprotic this will be polar because there is a bond between carbon and oxygen carbon and nitrogen difference in electronegativity hence there will be charge there would be negative charge del negative del negative on nitrogen and oxygen and del positive on carbon so this is polar but nevertheless this is not protic this is polar aprotic solvent so these three will be common polar aprotic solvents that will come across your syllabus so know them here itself one will be acetone dimethyl sulfoxide dim dimethyl formamide and the list of polar protic solvent is a long one you'll have all kind of alcohol here ethanol butanol tertiary butanol propanol hexanol all alcohols water protic aprotic now why did we study this we studied this because these two kind of solvent have a great role to play in SN1 and SN2 we can suppress SN1 or we can alleviate the rate of SN1 using polar protic solvent or polar aprotic solvent how let's see